Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Good morning and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. Today we're just going to have a look around. We have a really beautiful day. I've got some nice sunshine in here and there's just nothing like looking around in here when you have natural light. It really is a fun thing to do. Really nice. Uh, we have some new blooms. We've got a whole bunch of progress. I'm going to update you on some of this stuff that's been going on because I've done a lot of remounting, a lot of repotting, a lot of changes lately. Um, some are turning out really good. Some are not turning out so great. So we're going to go through it. I'm going to get the camera off the tripod. We'll move this Spanish moss out of the way, but it really is doing a great job. It's doing exactly what I was hoping it would do. It's keeping some of the sunshine from that window over there, oop, from that window over there, away from some of these plants over here that really don't want to get too much sun. So anyways, we'll, uh, we'll move on. Let's get going and start taking a look around. First things first, let's just take a quick look here at the Maxillaria tenuifolia. We've still got four blooms open and they just look so smashing in the sun. They really do. I'm really impressed with this plant. Um, the blooms are lasting a while. Again, the fragrance isn't powerful. It's, it's there. It smells just like fresh coconut, but you do have to get right up on it to smell it. Um, I wish it was a little more powerful, but having that said, we do have an orchid in the greenhouse right now in bloom that is just a showstopper. It's a stunner. It fills this entire tent with fragrance and we'll get to that here in just a moment. I've got um, lots of nice progress. This is our Dendrobium tetragonum and it's pushed out one new growth on this side here. It's got a small one coming on there and it's got a really nice new growth coming up there as well. So three new growths on that plant. That's a recent acquisition. I'm thrilled. It looks like it's going to push on and do well. Another dendrobium that's blowing my mind right now is this. This is my dendrobium unicum. And as you can see, it has an awesome new growth coming on. It's got plenty of new roots coming on in the base there. And I just look forward to seeing this thing in bloom one day. I really love the flowers of this plant. And my cane is much longer already than any of the ones it came with. I just cannot wait. So definitely doing well. A happy dendrobium and that's a good thing. Stepping down just a bit, very exciting. My Phalaenopsis bolina right here has its first bud starting to form on this spike. And I am really, really thrilled. This spike got a bud, but it happened at the wrong time of year. It pushed out as it was getting cool, and the cold weather in the winter just kind of knocked it out. It stalled it, and it hasn't done a damn thing. So I'm really excited to see this. I really, really want to see and smell this bloom. And that is Phalaenopsis bolina. Still have Old Faithful here. And it's down to its last flower. Everything else has fallen off of it. But we do have the white in full bloom. She is just a beautiful plant. I do love the way the lip has just the slightest speckling on it. I don't think I'll be able to get in close enough. Let's see. Yeah. Just a little bit of spotting to it. And I mean, that is just a really, really pretty orchid. Love that plant. It blooms faithfully for me twice a year, honestly. I've only had it for two years, but both years it has bloomed twice. There you go. You can see that one really nice. So that's some white mini fowl. Again, I got that from like Food Lion or just a regular grocery store. And uh, yeah, it, it's a great plant. Love it. <clears throat> the uh, Dendrobium Himai Melanoglossum is still hanging in there, even though I messed up the bottom flower, it's still looking great. Um, I did remount it, and it is pushing on quite nicely. No adverse effects so far, so I'm very, very excited about that. I think next year is going to really be the telltale to see how happy it is, but I do absolutely adore these little flowers. Um, our Bulbophyllum barbigerum has been struggling. It did put out a new growth that's definitely not full-sized. 
and to my surprise on these two growths that kind of st stalled they lost their leaves early it's pushing out two new growths and I'm really thrilled about that I really love this plant I am dying dying to see the blooms maybe not to smell them but it's a really neat Bulbophyllum orchid I love my Bulbos the uh, purple speckled monster as my friend Paula calls it this is the Bulbophyllum maximum we did a video on how to tame this plant and as you can see everything that we did took really well and this plant is pushing on quite nicely all of its growths and it is going to be a real real awesome plant one day I really hope so having that said get a little bit further out from it and take a look it's going to be a monster it already is a monster but things are going really well they're growing up the mount like we wanted them to they're putting out roots onto the mount and everything is happy and healthy and I am just dying 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 to see this plant bloom again maybe not smell it <laughs> but to see it I have my brand new catacetum shunkii right here still haven't watered it not going to until I see a bunch of roots come out but it's new growth it's pushing on I am thinking about mounting it I was talking to Brenda over at Orchid Delirium and she grows a lot of catacetums and she said it might actually be a good time to get it on the mount wait to water it but while it's doing its dormant thing and just starting to push on maybe I will just go ahead and get it on its mount and be done with it people might think I'm crazy people are gonna tell me I need to grow this in a pot but I just I just think it's gonna do better in a mount um, it's gonna look better on a mount too so we're gonna go from there and hopefully I don't mess everything up but that is the new Catacetum Shunkii and I'm very excited about that coming down here I have my one and only Neophenicia falcata and it has tried really hard to die on me a couple times finally pushed out a couple new growths and we have awesome awesome buds coming on this plant should be open in the next week or two but I'm not gonna let them stay on there very long I just want to see them share them with you guys and then I'm gonna cut this spike off so this plant can continue to get strength back into it because it has almost died twice the main plant here got crown rot it is still you know dying back slowly but I don't think it has crown rot anymore it just has these two growths that are coming out I think it's sucking the life out of it and I want again I want this plant to live I want it to be healthy I want these two growths to push on and get strong so they can push on more new growths and this plant can finally be something that's happy and in a forward moving direction they're really really susceptible to crown rot do not get water on the fans do not do it if you do they will probably over time get some sort of a rot and they will die I've lost one already and it was the strongest one it was doing really good and it got just a, I guess a little bit of water in the crown and it just took it down faster than you can ever believe so that is my Neo those are the buds and I am so excited to share that and that is that coming down here to this big thing this is a Bulbophyllum macranthum this has really neat flowers they're supposed to smell like cloves and I had a growth come out that kind of stalled in the winter and being a dummy I was poking at it prodding at it trying to figure out if it was alive and I tore it right off it was green on the inside uh, I don't think it had stalled truly but I definitely ruined it so much to my excitement further back it pushed out a new growth that I haven't touched much but it is doing really well it's growing quickly it's growing up the mount which is awesome because as you see this is quite the rambling quite the big bulbophyllum and it can be really hard to keep control of so I'm, I'm happy it pushed out further back and gives me a chance to keep it on this big tall long mount for hopefully the next couple years and get it to bloom so progress there as well and now I've got to go change the battery in this camera so give me a moment and we'll be back so here I've gotten out a plant that we I don't think have ever looked at together before this is Porpax Ustulata this is a really really unique and rare species of plant from Asia and it's another one that's got a real crazy dormancy period I don't know if you can see that down there 
Let me set this thing down. Try to get in closer. There we go. The pseudo bulbs have like a net pattern, a little weirdness to them. And I tell you what, when this thing drops its leaves, you stop watering it all winter long. It looks like just dead, brown, weird. And that's it. Much to my surprise, with the warmer weather coming out, it has got little green shoots all over it. A couple of them are a little further along than others, but I am just thrilled that we're hopefully going to get to see this plant bloom because it's got really neat little red flowers and again what an oddball species. Poor Pax Ustulata. Like I said we haven't ever looked at that together before but I really wanted to share that with you guys because I am so excited about this plant springing back into life and hopefully back into blooming. And that is Poor Pax Ustulata. That plant lives back here um, in what I consider to be an extremely shady area. There's mounts that hang down in front of everything here, on Oncidium types, and everything behind it gets a lot of shade. Bright shade, but shade nonetheless. I've got the Dendrobium aberrans that I recently got from Andes. That's also got a new growth coming on it. We've got um, Cycopsiella lamengii, um, Orangus mysticidii, Orangus punctata, I've got a Dikea hystracina down here, and a Bulbophyllum or um, Cirapetalum pomilio back there. So, a pretty shady area, but all these plants are growing real strong. I was, I was almost, honestly, almost lost this. The Cycopsia lamengii got some rot in the upper sections and was really dying back. So I, I made the drastic choice to cut it back to three bulbs, and it did put out a side shoot, and it's starting to produce roots. And I have started to just care for this thing a whole lot differently. I put it on a new piece of bark, and I'm just really hopeful to see this thing push on. It's a really neat plant. I really want to see the blooms. And yeah, so another one. Let's see, I usually have all these other plants. This is a, my twinkles there. This is my Oncidium varicosum var felicio valdino. It's very similar to Roger's. Um, Varicosa that he spoke about the other day. That's why I inquired about his. I have one. It looks a bit different. This actually goes under the name of Gomesa Varicosa, at least where I bought it from at Equigenera. And it's grown on nicely. Um, I've mounted it right away. It's pushed out two growths for me. I don't see why it shouldn't bloom, but it hasn't yet. So <clears throat> hopefully this year. Um, but if not, I think maybe I have a light issue. Maybe it needs to come up and get more light. But um, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Let's take a look around. Hit some blooms, why don't we? Because that's really why we're here. So, so we have our wonderful Encyclia tampensis. This is the fragrant orchid I was talking about. Beautiful as it is, it is also at least that fragrant. It's got a very floral scent. And it's got just all but one bud open at this point in time. This last bud is opening. It'll be fully open by the end of the day, but man, what a beautiful little flower. And again, the scent, it's very floral. It smells like a flower. I mean, it smells like kind of the, one of the flowers you would get in some sort of an arrangement. And it fills this whole tent up with just a lovely fragrance. While you're watering it, it wafts up and gets you, and it's just awesome. So that is our Encyclia tampensis. It is doing real well, the plants as well. Lots of new growths, lots of new, oh sorry, lots of new roots. No, no sign of new growth yet, but I'm not shocked. It'll probably wait till after it's done blooming. And that is awesome. This is the reason why I wanted to come in here under natural light. This is my Jerak Firm Crystal. And it just opened up its first two blooms. Well, I guess second set of two blooms. This one opened up a few days ago and pay attention to the margins. These are supreme color changers. They open up this deep, deep, deep red, velvety red color. 
and they slowly turn their lips to this really awesome marbled pink color and um, it's just a beautiful beautiful plant a really nice addition to this corner over here I've got my other tolumnias and other things around here but you know if you step back Oop, it's going to go out of focus, but you get the point. It's just a just a beacon of red shining in the light over here. So that's Jerak Firm Crystal. It's been painstakingly forming this spike. It's only got two blooms on this time, but I'm thrilled. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, no, 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 I do have one more thing. I lied, I lied. So before we get out of here, I just wanted to update you on the Dracula Gascaliana that we repotted. It appears as though whatever the repot did it stimulated this bud to actually finally push on harder. So we may actually get to see Dracula blooms in here before too long if I don't let it get too hot and mess everything up. But I did want to update you on that plant and also I want to update you on the Mastavelia Garcia. This was from one of my last repot videos. It did drop a few leaves. I had it over there, but it seems to have stopped. So they will do that with their pouting little selves, and then they kind of just chill out. So I think we're in the chill out mode. I'm really excited. I think this one's going to pull through. So let's get out of here. Let's get over to the tank and see what we've got going on there. So we're here in the cloud forest tank and honestly we're a little thin on the ground for blooms. You may be a little shocked to hear that, but I only have a few Lepanthes right now. Caladictyon, oh this just closed. Uh, even Telepogon of it's bloomed its head off. It's got a couple to come in a week or so, but it is, it's done for the next couple weeks. Um, Helicocephala is in bloom. I've got the Poroglossum, I think Mariposa is in bloom, but that's not why we're here. What I want to look at is our Mazda Vegas that we remounted the other day. So this here is the Garcia. It's got a yellow leaf. It's dropped a few leaves, but all in all, it seems to be doing okay. The new growth is pushing on strong, and what I think I'm going to do is take some of this moss off from behind it and just relocate it down here because it doesn't really need it there. I was a little tired to say the least when I was doing these mounts. I was up late that night and um, I think I might have overdone it a bit with the moss. Having that said, sadly, here's the update on our Mazdevalia Venatoria. I oh, probably can't see that. Anyhow, here is our lovely Mazdevalia Venatoria. See it? Of course you don't, because I killed it already. I think I put too much moss on here. I think I crowded it. Um, there is a section here. There's, it's like the, the bark is kind of raised up. And I tried to attach the orchid to that and then put moss around it. Um, I know it had some heat stress issues. It dropped a few leaves from that right away. But it just never stopped. I thought going on here would help it out. Keep it nice and moist, keep it cool, but um, yeah, it, it just it just failed. I lost it all. I went to pick it up the very next day after mounting it, and about half of its leaves fell right off, and the next day, the rest of them went, um, and it is just gone, so we're going to keep the moss going for now. <laughs> no sense in wasting that. I hung it up here in a nice bright spot, and the moss is just going to continue to grow, and we'll just have a mount ready for something one day that's going to go on moss. I do have the brand new Mazdevalia patriciana here. It's starting to do the same thing. It was about three times this size and if you look down in there it's starting to get kind of rotten so I'm going to peel this off of this mount today. I'm going to take a look at it again and we're going to see what the heck is going on and hopefully save this plant before it meets the same fate as the Venatoria because that just breaks my heart. The Garcias are doing well. The Mazdevalia Winlandiana that we had mounted and split, it's doing really well. My Florabunda is still doing well, but the little guys, I think they just had a really tough time in the heat. They both 
spend an extra day in transit and it's been 90 degrees or better I know better than to order this kind of plant in the hot of the summer but I just had to have it so we'll take a closer look at this in another video but that is the update for now and that is the update for today so let me get out of here and we'll go ahead and close up shop so that's going to conclude our tour for today I'm starting to lose the light and I just wanted to get you guys around in here while we had it. Here's the monster Nepenthes from the doorway. This thing is really getting out of hand. We're probably going to have to remount it. I'm sorry, remount. We're probably going to have to repot this thing soon. Because, I mean, if I stretch it up, I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's almost getting to the point where it's going to be touching the roof. <laughs> and uh, we can't have that. So I've let it go. I've let it kind of droop over to the side so it doesn't get too close to the light and burn itself but it's going to need to get into a bigger pot soon something that stays moist longer and provides more moisture for the uh, growths that are coming up because I've got two more large vines and another one just starting that are going to be coming up here sooner than later joining their older brother and uh, I am going to start to run out of room so I'm thinking about going with some sort of a self-watering or like a lechuza or some kind of pot that I can have a reservoir of water in the base and I'm going to sit it on the ground, stake everything up so we can grow it more vertically and hopefully make it easier to manage because right now, whenever I go in here, I've got to move it or dance around it. Um, I tear up leaves sometimes doing that and I just don't want to have to do that much longer. It'd be so much easier to be in a pot. I could just slide it out somewhere else in the grow room or anywhere else for that matter and work on stuff in the, in the tent and then not have to hang it in my shower, which is the only place in my house it fits now. <laughs> so, anyhow, that's that. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining in. I hope you enjoyed the new blooms and the progress updates for these plants in both areas. So, thank you so much for joining. I do appreciate it. I hope you guys are all staying safe. And until next time, happy growing.